Hey Doobsters, it's me again. So, I'm in Flag Finn, and it wasn't that far of a drive. They say it about an hour. And after doing trips that take up to three and four hours, an hour drive's not that bad. <laughs> um, so, like I said, I'm in Flag Finn, and I've already had my guided tour with the same guy that did our uh, talks at school. He's really famous, and he actually found this place. So it was really cool talking to the original guy. And the particular reason why I wanted to make this video is because you can't capture this in picture. I am literally standing on what would be the path of the Roman road. Yeah, the Roman road. Now, this, this is just merely the path of it. Um, in actuality, if we were, if during their times it would be two meters higher, so about six feet higher than it is right now. But this is just crazy walking on this road. I've learned so much stuff, like they've rebuilt these huts that uh, the people used to live in. And <laughs> the archaeologist that was doing the talk with us today said, I wish they had never used the word hut because these are not huts, they're houses. All 40 of us that were on this trip, this field trip from class, fit in when those just around the perimeter. We weren't cramped or anything. It was amazing. Yeah. But still. I actually have not walked this Roman path. Uh, it was, um, I went around the other way, taking pictures on the bridge and stuff, but oh, it's so beautiful and cold. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, cold weather, cold damp weather. If you listen to the gears shifting, oh, and it won't focus. But uh, sign over there says Bronze Age settlement, museum, Iron Age roundhouse. So I actually had lunch in the Iron Age roundhouse over there, which is different than the Bronze Age roundhouse that we had our talk in. They fit all of us and it was much smaller too. Trees, such a beautiful color everywhere. Uh, so this has been just amazing. I can't even describe how old everything is. It's like, you know, walking literally in the past. Finn Bog Garden. This was the site of the main excavation at Flag Finn. It was here that the causeway, which you can see as a section of the preservation hall, was first uncovered. The rows of posts joined a large man-made wooden platform the size of Wembley sta Stadium. I would say that's pretty big. Among the features uncovered was a pool of dog bones placed along one side of it, and a dog skeleton, or shall I say, skeleton, staked into place. This may have been connected with ceremonial ritual taking place on the site. So this was the original reason why they came out here and started excavating. How amazing. The posts that you see here are marker posts indicating a route of the causeway. The real posts were taller, wider, and there were many more of them. Along the line of posts, over 300 bronze artifacts have been found. This is an amazing number of valuable objects on one site. One site has 300 bronze artifacts. That's amazing. Ancient, adjacent to the dig, the earliest wheel in England was discovered. You can see the wheel and the restriction. Oh, I took pictures of it in the museum. This area has been restored as a bog garden with plants that would have grown at Flagfin 3,000 years ago. The pollen of these and hundreds of other plant species have been found in the excavations. OMG, that's amazing. These plants are growing at the same level as a Bronze Age fin. Wow. He was telling us that a lot of this land was underwater 
and the people during the Bronze Age came in when the water got out. I'm gonna go up this little area. Hopefully I won't slip. Oh, I don't have to. I can just walk over here. Look at that. So anyway, it was really fascinating hearing this guy passionately talk about the preservation of wood from the Bronze Age. That's right after the Stone Age. That's right after we learned how to get out of trees. Wow. <laughs> he also gave us a minimal demonstration of the ingenious woodworking that these people, these hominids, during the time of the of the Bronze Age had already achieved since they had only bronze tools which are not good for, ac for using as axes in the general sense that we think of them um, they learned how to split wood so splitting wood with wedges in a systematic way was a very easy way to make planks Very cool. I took a ridiculously long amount of notes, and it seems like the students now are kind of envious of me while the guy was talking. Our professors gave us questions to answer <laughs> to help them with their finals. So over here that I'm walking towards is the Bronze Age roundhouse that um, about a third of our tour here talked about. Oh wow, I didn't even see this last time. Check that out. That's huge. But, um, they said they're recreating these to some extent. These homesteads gives them a better idea as to what it would be like during that culture. About what they would do and where people would sit and why people would do certain things. Over there is a forging station. I took pictures of that too. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this because it gets dark in here. But he said on this side of the of the hut or house rather would be the living quarters where you would prepare food, kids would play, you know, where you'd do the daily things. Here would be a chair where the most important person would sit, much like our Native Americans that do that. And this would be the sleeping quarters. Sleeping quarters are on the north of the hut, and the living quarters are on the south, and it was very symbolic to them. Um, they found that a lot of burials were actually on the north end of of the houses and they they believe that the spirituality and their daily living collided there was no clear separation between church and home <laughs> but uh, he was telling us that certain woods do not give off smoke and that they would use these woods uh, smoke that would you know potentially harm us they would use these woods and the heat of the smoke and ash would collect in this area up here. Too bad it's so dark you can't see. Um, and that's where they would smoke dry meats, like fishes and other such meats, as a preservation. One other really, really, really cool tidbit is that these, this moss that the or growth or whatever I rem don't remember what he called it that was on top of these houses would collect the ash and they would every season they would take this off and put it in the garden as a natural fertilizer and replace it with local grass I guess like this and start the cycle over again hopefully I have enough time I'll do it real fast to show you the preservation of the roads that they had made with 
planks. Um, it's been kind of hard to see. They give us some guidance. Oh, so beautiful. Earlier, we spotted swans over there. I did take pictures of them. They're so beautiful. It reminded me of home. This little river area. A rose garden. And this was where he did the wood demonstrations explaining the different types of splitting and why they would bore holes on either side of the wood. Would be to uh, put rope in there and they could travel make the wood travel uh, much easier to the site in which they were actually building. It's kind of hard to see because he's got a wedge on top of it but there's a wedge and a hammer right there that they would use and he says that the second most important tool that any bronze aged person would have would be that wedge. So now we're going inside the preservation area where they're showing us what it would be like to build and what the community would look like. It was very cute to little models. But it did give us hints on what life would be like during this time, during the different glacial periods. And last but not least, the roads themselves. So in here, sorry for the echo, and here is where the planks would make streets, for lack of a better term, and it was also divided by class and family, class and family, if you didn't hear from the slam of the door, um, into six sections, and what was found within these six sections would uh, show you how important the family was. But that you're preserving this area with water, a special combination of water, I believe, that also had like, um, not silver, but uh, he's, he'd have listed it all off. Um, it was a special combination that they found out would preserve the wood in a much better way. He said that if the wood dried, it would just completely rot and deteriorate, which. <laughs> You'd think that the water would do it, but not in the consistency that they have. And so up here, every so often, it sprays their consistency on top of the wood and to pre preserve it for us to be able to see the amazing architecture that they did, splitting all those logs. Can you see that really long log in the back over there, right corner? It's really long. This camera is deceptively making everything tiny. They also painted murals about what it would look like if you were to do a panoramic view from this point. That there would be fields, the water, the roads, and more water. Yeah. Very beautiful representation of how to cross. It's more like a bridge than it is a road, isn't it? How to cross this bog of water. So I'm going to go out and hopefully not upset anybody by taking this long and head back to the bus. So I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of flag fin with me. It wasn't everything, but it was everything that I had the chance to see. And, uh, oh wait, one more thing. Local animals. The guy is a natural, everyday farmer and horticulturist. Yep. Okay, well I'm gonna go back to the bus. Peace out, doomsters. It was a blast sharing this with you.